Hello and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. Today's video is sponsored by our Amazon affiliate link which you'll see in the description below. You'll also see in the description below any links to videos I mentioned in this video. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about Kalanchoe care, what to know about keeping Kalanchoe healthy and happy in your indoor garden. Now these plants are notorious for being given out during holiday season, during the winter months of the year, depending on where you live, and then not making it very far because they're not taken care of properly. But you can, if you know what to do, keep these plants even flowering uh, a lot of times during the year in your indoor garden. Uh, if you know what to do. So right now it is July 31st and this guy is on another set of blooming. I was given this plant, I believe it was March, early March. At that time it was uh, nice and it had a nice bloom stock on it and then it uh, finished with that and it started another one. So you can do that uh, if you know what to do and I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. So first a little bit more about this. This is a succulent and it has it has a, a succulent type leaves waxy thick leaves the uh, the flowers themselves are also waxy and very pretty it uh, comes in a wide range of colors uh, com colors of flowers as you can see in this photo there is fuchsia orange yellow red pink white peach colors, all kinds of beautiful coral colors, beautiful colors. So it is a real showstopper, an eye-catching plant to have in your indoor garden and to have flowering plants in your indoor garden throughout the year is always so refreshing, right? So not only in the colder months, but in the hot, warmer months when maybe it's a little too warm to be outside and you'd rather be indoors with your beautiful Kalanchoe uh, blooming away for you. Okay, so how to do that, how to get the Kalanchoe to survive and thrive. So as mentioned, they are succulents, so, so they respond poorly <laughs> to being overwatered. Do not overwater these little guys or big guys when you get the bigger ones because they won't last long. They will quickly succumb to root rot. Uh, you'll know this has occurred when the soil, soil stays wet and you, and you haven't watered in a long time, the plant starts to look bad, it starts to have issues with getting, especially at the base, it gets a little squishy and wobbly there, down there, if you, you do that, and at the base it's wobbly in terms of the base of the plant and the roots being connected, and then the leaves will, can yellow, fall off, etc., get squishy, so uh, those are some signs of overwatering, so obviously you don't want to get to that point. So what you want to do is you want to water them only when they have pretty much dried out. The soil has dried out because they are succulents. So you want to get to the three in the red zone on your moisture meter, okay? Or if you were to pick the plant up, you, it's very lightweight, and, and you can tell. You stick your finger in, it's dry. Then you water them. You water them well, let it wash through, and then make sure that you put them back in a container container, whatever waterproof container you're using underneath uh, the, the, the dish, the drainage dish or whatever, make sure to put them onto a dry drainage dish. Keep that in mind, like I said, the overwatering, not a good thing. But you do obviously want to water them uh, so that they do flower for you because all plants that flower fruit and all plants in general do need some water to uh, produce and uh, plants that flower and and fruit need more water for those the flowers and the fruits. Okay, bright light, really important for Kalanchoe. So they do best in bright lighting. So this guy is near a full spectrum light <coughs> that I have <coughs> on uh, and it is on from 6 to 6 a.m. to midnight so it's on for many hours of the day uh, um, so you could probably go a little bit less a few hours less than that but they do need bright light so a window uh, generally if you want to keep them blooming all year long probably isn't enough light uh, unless you have something like a 
uh, you have something like a really good um, atrium or, or a greenhouse or a greenhouse room that gets really beautiful light all day long, that could work. But otherwise, give them some full spectrum supplemental lighting. You can get full spectrum lighting, which simulates day length in any type of bulb now and put in any type of fixture. Okay, so that's how this guy did rebloom. If I had had this in some window somewhere or just sitting on a table, it wouldn't be reblooming right now. The, um, uh, in terms of windows though, if you just want to have them do that first bloom uh, and then wait um, and do, the, there's another thing that you can do, by, you can put them outside after that, then you would want to put them in an un unobstructed eastern or southern window. And, uh, and as mentioned, if you don't have that, then use the supplemental lighting. The, you want to prune off spent flowers. So once they're done blooming, you want to prune off those spent flowers. If you don't, those little spent flowers will attract pests, annoying pests like mealybugs. So do get them off of there once they're done. It will also, if you're working towards reblooming the plant, it will also help the plant to start create new blooms as well when you prune off the old blooms. When necessary, if you need to prune off foliage, go all the way down to the base of the plant and cut it off at that point. You want to fertilize these monthly, so and generally speaking, you will f you will um, feed them from late winter through fall. So they will have a rest period in the fall until late winter again. So use a well balanced organic fertilizer that's designed for house plants when you do that, and uh, you can do liquid or granular. Uh, liquid tends to work well because the plants tend to not be. Uh, it's, it's a little bit easier to, to do that, uh, especially on a monthly basis, but you can still use granular as well. Okay, so when you want to, in order to get them to have a really nice, healthy new growth cycle, if you're not going to be growing them the whole time indoors try and, and basically forcing them to create a new cycles of blooms over and over again. What you can do is once they finish blooming for you in the spring, after you got them in, in the winter months and they finished blooming in the spring, you can put them outdoors in your garden in, a, in an area with dappled sunlight, bright indirect light, no direct light because they are an indoor plant. Unless you live somewhere along the coast or somewhere like that where th then you could put them in, 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 in direct light because there's a lot of cloud cover. So you'll have to see what your microclimate is like for that. But what you do is you grow them outdoors and you would also, uh, with the lighting, want to acclimate, acclimate them to more sunnier conditions. So initially you put them in the shade and then move them out into that dappled sunlight and into the, into the uh, indirect bright light. Okay, so and then they grow outdoors during the summer and then in, until the late fall. And then before frost, because remember they are succulent, so if you live in an area that does get freezing temperatures and frost, before frost, you will want to bring them indoors and keep them in a fairly dark area. Um, uh, so you want about 14 hours of darkness a day. So you could actually put them in a closet if you want to in the late afternoon, take them out in the next morning and they will, after two to four weeks, sometimes six weeks, depending, in the late fall, by, by early winter, they will be budding up for you again, and they will start flowering once again, and then you can do repeat, rinse and repeat that whole cycle again, keeping all of these different tips in mind. As far as anything like pests, do watch out for mealybugs. They don't do a whole bunch of damage to the plants, but they do tend to try to feed on the plant foliage sometimes. And as mentioned, they will congregate in the, uh, the, um, the foliage, uh, in the flowers, in the flower when, flowers when they're done flowering. So that's something to keep in mind. So that is a very good uh, um, overview there for you of Cal and Coe, getting them to bloom indoors and enjoying them. them. They're a very festive plant and very colorful plant. Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video. And please check the bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.